Alright, so today's random matchup is a 4v4, and actually before the game really gets going, we're going to check out in here and see who's actually playing as what and what teams we actually have. So that naturally the first team we'll do is Chris's, who is also known as Oracus, and he's playing in grey and is the Persians as we can see there. And we've got Fee Age right over there, so naturally many Iron Age if you know your chemistry, and he's his ally there playing as Franks. Down over here we have Dogo, who I featured I think it was yesterday in a 1v1. And he is also his ally. And over here we have RVK Root who is playing as Saracens and also his ally. So he is teamed up against Red Hot who is playing as the Turks and in blue. Thom who is playing as Vikings and in green. Down here we have Sky who is playing as Britons and in purple. And down here over the end we have Adidas by the looks of it playing as Spanish in orange. So we're going to try and do something different. We're going to try and stay on Oracus down over here and well just watch how he does it and what he does because he plays quite a good game in this one. I will admit that. So while he's getting set up I'll say as well um, tutorials. What do you want to see? Because I've done quite a few now. Is there any other tutorials individually that you want to see? I've done really a basics one recently and I thought that was pretty good because not many people mention walling off how to build your lumber camps and of course that only little use of the farm there so definitely let me know what you want to see there as well and also I'm thinking about starting doing some live streamings once we get a few more people just so we have a fair amount watching so that that'll be good to see as well just some live streams could be good because then we can have chat open naturally I can respond at the same time you guys can have a game to watch we can put some music on I don't know what we'll put on probably something nice but oh boy nice something I like so definitely something like the tutorials so well that's really about all I have to say so definitely let me know what you want to see tutorial wise alright so we'll have a look over here now so on 7 population and we'll check out his scouting as well so as you can see he's just scouting in circles no doubt using shift clicking which I believe I put in the other tutorial as well so by now if you watched all the tutorials you should be able to understand pretty much why players do most things and how they do it so as we can see coming up here to build a lumber camp area is fairly enclosed towards the back of his base as well and he's got his ally over here, so he's going to be less threatened from an attack round here than he will coming straight through here onto this wood pile here. As you can see, most of them are fairly far away from his town center, so that's pretty much why he's building back there. So, nine population there, and as you can see, we've got seven there, I believe it is. Yep, seven there, or, or six, two, four, six, six, my mistake. We've got six there on the sheep. So, as you can see now, sending more villagers down over here. So, that would have been villager, what, 8, 9, and 10 coming down to wood. No, it would have been. Yeah, I keep mucking up because I always look at population. I always forget about scouts. But as you can see, he is bringing in the sheep now. So, he's going to go for sheep, and he's scouted his boar there. And has he found his other one? Yeah, and his other one's just over here. So, he's got his boar set up, so that's not a bad thing. So it might even just speed it up a little, just so we can get out of the way here. Just because the early start of the game, no one... It's pretty much the same, honestly. Most start games are the same, and that's why that's why everyone does it, because it works. And why change what works? So as you can see, he has not done loom, though. Hunting boar without loom is always extremely dangerous. Sorry, I had a bit of a mic slip there. So you've always got to watch that and be extremely careful. As you can see, he just ran straight down there. Timing was great. As you can see, putting this wall up here, so naturally anyone coming to this area down over here, without coming around there, is going to have to be forced past this town centre, and naturally that's always a good defence. So as we can see, luring this boar in on this side here now. And I think my computer's running nice and fast today, actually, because it's actually quite fast. Usually it's a bit slower than this, but... Oh, well. Defrag. Do it. <laughs> so as you can see, luring both of these boards in here. As we can see, we've got good communication between the teams. Just pointing out that we have a Britain player over here and who it is. So putting that barracks up, and as you, if you didn't notice that, Sky just came past and scouted that. So he's going, to, and then we go. He's coming past again, and he might come past again and see that it's got units inside it. There we go. So we've seen it's got units inside it. So he's expecting the drush now. Only other thing is about drushing. If you don't get loom, you can get a three four militia, I think it is. But if you do loom, you're in trouble. Going for five, alright, so you can get five militia there. So, as you can see, he hasn't done loom, which made that boar gathering there extremely dangerous, as you can see. 
lots of villagers there on low health. And naturally, if he runs into a wolf as well, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. So on to 30 population now and continuing to pump out. So as we can see, he's going for the drush over here. He's managed to get past this wall here before it was completely walled off. As you can see, doing some damage to these villagers and just harassing them. Having idle villagers like this is the same as having them not working. <coughs> we know Oricus is taking losses there, but honestly, he's taking better losses because his villagers are still collecting in his base. His villagers aren't over here idled. And as we can see there, Doggo bringing his scout in there just to help out a little. And losing that one there. So we'll just have a quick check over here to see what happens. So lost, losing quite a few villagers there. One militia coming down here, and apart from that, not much else going on. As you can see, completing this wall off on this side here. So this gold camp here now is completely safe, unless they are to come around the backside there. And again, walling off to the town centre, so anything to come past will pretty much have to be fought through the town centre. And really, nothing can really do that until you get knights. You can do it with light cav if you've upgraded the armour on them, and you're willing to lose a few. You can definitely do it, but... It's always harder to do. Alright, so as we can see, locking off the backside here. And attacking this barracks here. Naturally, that's going to take a long time to come down with that. So as we can see, we've got three villages down here. And over here we have eight. <coughs> excuse me. We have eight on farms up there, as well as another five down here. We have three, four, five on berries, and over here we have nine on wood. So that's just a quick count of what he's got before he hits feudal. So that's what he would have had when he first hit feudal. Seeing these archers now, archers coming out, archers are extremely dangerous in this age, especially when you're playing as Persians. Because Persians like to get out spears. Spears are probably one of Persians' great things, but yeah. They can always go light cav as well, because Persians are definitely a cavalry civilization, as you can tell by the fact that they have war elephants. So as we can see now, going, well, bypassing Feudal Age and going straight to Castle Age, as we can say, is they are a cavalry civilization, they're going to go for cavalry. And here, as we can see, running straight in through here. And losing them all, so great play there. Nearly thought he might have missed it, and they might have got up here to his lumberjacks, then he would have been in trouble. Well, not really, those villagers would have been able to take him out. Alright, so we've got right going up there, and Thumb going up, so that's two in Castle Age there. So that means we've got one from each team, no, wait, one from each team? Yeah, we've got one from each team in Castle Age already. Alright, so about to hit Castle Age here, we've got one stable, well, looks of it. No extra stables up yet, not that I can see. Oh uh, yeah, one extra stable up down here, and as you can see, already producing those knights. Knights, of course, been great. Has he got ally? He hasn't got ally yet, because he hasn't managed to put a market up. It doesn't look like it at any rate. Yes, no market, so that means he's not going to have allied line of sight yet. Allied line of sight is definitely one of the better things to get. So as we can see, starting to mass up some knights now. So two there, how many more have we got in Three, four, and as we can see, archers and militia coming in through here. Naturally going to have no chance versus knights. As we can see, nearly losing one. Not even losing one knight there. Taking a lot of damage, but not losing one. So let's have a quick look at what he's got. He's got six cavalry out in play. So seven. Plus another one coming out there. So that's eight, I believe. Eight ca Yep. What do we got? Eight there. So that's eight cavalry being created now. Even though he already has his... I believe he lost his scout as well, so... That's no biggie. <coughs> so I've been at work. I got called into work and well... Husky voice. So as we can see, this villager coming down here, no doubt to do something, and decided to attack it with a knight. Always a smart idea. Alright, so villager going down over there, and taking some hits over here by the looks of it. However, can't really see... And there we go. So, Thom has managed to get some knights into Chris's base. I hope... Yeah, it is Chris. It better be. I'm not going to be happy. That is quite a few knights to have in there, actually. And losing quite a few villagers. As you can see, producing camels now, doing the smart thing. So the natural response, of course, to having knights in your base like that when you can do it, is to produce camels. Camels and pikemen, they are the natural, really, counter. So as you can see, coming through here, and losing quite a few villages in that attack, I will admit, and having idols left over as well. So, losing quite a bit, however, these idols, I'm sure, will be back to work very soon. Oh, as you can see, Monk being produced X is going to want to heal these units. And as you can see, just chasing them across the map here. 
continue to up here, as well as continuing to invade this area here at the same time. As we can see there, though, Thom has come in to help his ally out here, and naturally, Britain's still building archers. Archers, of course, being the Britain's main weapon of choice. As you can see, just following his opponent across the map here, hopefully Thom won't be regrouping with more knights and be able to kill off the rest of these camels. However, that's definitely a possibility. So, as we can see, all the idols have been put back to work already, farms have been replanted, and more villages on the way. And these extra town centers, of course, are going to help quite a bit. So, right now, these are just coming back to regroup, no doubt, over here with these knights here, and no doubt going to bring this monk here up to come and really just. Two monks. So, he's got two monks there, so we'll be able to heal up his units as well as convert if he goes for another attack. After taking that quite big loss, he has still maintained a lot of his score lead, which is always a good idea. Has he got the market yet? Hasn't done the market upgrade yet either. For those who want to see this game with, well, full visualizations, usually I do, but in this game I've just decided to follow Chris for a while. Alright, so over here, so he's attacking again going for a whole nother attack on this area here. And as you can see there, some good teamwork there, and it looks like Dogo is going to come down and help out Chris. Siege Workshop coming up on the hill here, which is always a good idea, because then you can get that little mangonel bonus. And as we can see, so that's Dogo coming in there with more knights, so he's able to help. Go back to here, Dogo. As we can see, no doubt to combat those archers, he's going to get some mangonels out. That's quite a bit of... That's quite a few units there. And a siege workshop coming up there as well. Manganel being created, naturally. And the natural response to that will be to create another Manganel. And will he get any damage done with this? That is my question. As we can see, more and more units just being created now to try and take out his opponent here. Now would be a great chance, actually, to bring that Manganel out when they're all there grouped together firing. That would have been a great chance. And as we can see here now, Thom running in with more knights again. This is going to be troublesome. However, he does have two camels left over. However, that is not going to really help. Looks like these mangonels are going to be forced out and aren't going to be able to use their optimum. And battering ram coming in now as well. So as you can see on this side, it is a big push. I can tell you for a fact there's a lot going on on the other side over there, but well... That's not what we're trying to show this game. This game we're trying to show just how one player plays the game. I know it's a team game, but I just want to show you how one player has played it, and we're just going to focus on the air. So as we can see, bringing battering rams in now. And you can see this warlock's working extremely well. He's forcing his opponent to come in through the town center. Any units in it? So yes, he has gathered units in the town center, which of course means he's going to be able to do lots more damage to this pike. Alright, so right now they're trying to push out of this base here. And they're using this town centre as quite a, a defensive structure. As you can see, it's firing on all these knights, doing damage to those pikemen, keeping those pikemen out of the area there. And forcing this to go down. Alright, so deleting these palisades here off now, which pretty much shows their opponent that they're going to be going for a big fight here. So as you can see, they run out through the side here, and get their damage on. As you can see, they're doing quite a bit. Starting to lose quite a few now. And Ram's coming in now, and the, as you can see, they've noticed that they're pretty much being overrun in this area. So naturally they're trying to get rid of the Rams, just so these town centers won't come down as early, and they'll be able to get more damage out of them. Naturally, these British Kronk... British. These Britons, crossbows, are doing quite a bit of damage. As you can see, they've got those range upgrades. And right now, it's looking like... Orcus is in a lot of trouble. He's being pushed on really hard. He's here, losing his population from this town. Looks like this town center may go down, and more reinforcements coming in here from the enemy. So he's looking to be in a very bad position. As you can see over here, lost, well, all his woodcutters there have been abandoned, and it doesn't look like he has any more. There's no woodcutters at all at the moment, so he does have a thousand wood, but that is still not much when it comes down to it. He's about to lose his town center and maybe a lot of these villages. So as we see all these knights now, I think it takes something like a hundred arrows 
for an unupgraded un crossbow to kill an unupgraded knight. I think that's not, it's something like that. It's really bad. So as we can see, 10 stone fast sent off from Chris there quickly. I believe it was Chris. Would have been nice of him. Does he have a market up yet? I can't even see. <laughs> I can't tell. But he did lose a hundred stone, but it might have been because he was putting this town center up, I can't tell. So this area of here we can see right is coming in with camels. Of course, being the Saracens, they get a lot of upgrades. Plus that unique tech giving them 30 extra hit points. As we can see over here, massive push. They are pushing Thumb right out of the area. As you can see, right is up by 500 points on the next highest player, who is Thumb. And it's quite interestingly matched as you can see yellows come down here and these camels are just massacring these knights off let's check still hasn't done that I might turn fog of war off and we'll just watch Chris in particular and whoa crap that is a lot of cavalry coming in there from red hot a lot of cavalry as we can see in this area here though there is going to be quite a bath. As you can see, castle coming up there, enemy castle coming up there. There's quite a lot going on this side over here. But that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on this. As you can see, that's a very large group of camels there. A very large group of knights there. So Chris can be in a lot of trouble, especially with Thom going into the Imperial Age there. So he's going to have access to trebuchets, which means he'll be able to pretty much nuke the village from outside the walls. Alright, so here come the knights. Going to be doing quite a bit of damage, I can see. Alright, here they come. Going to be in a lot of trouble. As you can see, losing quite a few villagers, now garrisoning them. Of course, it's always a good idea. Down over here, as we can see, lots of camels are out again. And more castles coming up for Turks. For Turks, of course, once they hit the Imperial Age, are going to be able to get those Bombard Cannons. And they're going to be extremely dangerous. Thom, now going up to Cavalier, so he's going for a kill. As you can see, camels being created. However, that is a lot of Cavalier, and he won't be able to do too much against it. Dogo in there, doing his best. Dogeo? Dogeo. Yeah, that'll be it. Doing his best in here to try and fend off these cavalry, but they've been upgraded more than he's been capable of, so there's no way he's going to be able to fight this off, especially when he's outnumbered. As we can see, doing quite a bit of damage over here. And the battle's on over here now, this is where the fighting's going on now. You can see Castle up here, but again, we want to focus on this area. So as we can see, Castle wanting to come up there from Dogo. As we can see, Barracks coming up, not Dogo, Thom, sorry. Barracks coming up there. Castle going to be coming up here quite soon. It looks like we've got... And Longsword's on the way as well, so we'll be able to counter those Camels. Which are no doubtably giving him quite a bit of trouble. So Chris is in a very bad position right now. Uh, right up here is managing to push in very hard and use Mamluks. Mamluks, of course, being good against pretty much, well, Camels. Every... Every really unit that's available as a cavalry. So, as we can see, Pike's coming in now. And just lots of damage being done. Manganel coming in now. As we can see, Sky is coming in with a fair few units here. Mainly Pikemen, but a few crossbows as well, which are no doubt getting that Britain's upgrades. Uh, down over this side here now. Taking damage down over here. So, Orcus is pretty much out of the game. For Pretty much from now. Adidas of course has been hit harder but there was quite a big fight going on over here in the game. Lots of knights, lots of conquestadors out. But as we can see this technical advantage being able to get trebuchets out is absolutely killing them. Especially on anyone who is still in well castle age which is iron age down there. F.E. Yeah there's a little tip for you as you don't know the chemical symbol for iron is F.E. As we can see, all the way down here, these trebuchets just raining hell down on these houses. Losing these houses as well, going to really do a lot of damage. But it's hard to show you the big picture and try and show you only one. Especially with Orcus getting caned like he is right now. There's not really much he's got left to do. 
But anyway, that's how it happened. That was the defeat right there. How most of it went down. I just thought it would be good to watch so you can see how he considered to really just hold in there. He pushed back. Well, didn't push back. Pulled back. Built more town centers up and kept the fight going down there. As you can see right now, he is behind by quite a bit, but not as much as Adidas. Adidas has been hit really hard. Over this side here now, as we can see, Camel's coming in. Of course, not getting getting the bonus first Elite Marmalukes, I believe, but the Elite Marmalukes also getting a small bonus. And going to Cavalier there for Iron Age. Down over here, as you can see, this castle going up, doing a lot of damage. And Trebuchet's coming out of that castle. So doing quite a bit of damage down there, and finding these markets, so that's where he had his market. I don't think it shows you whether or not... Oh, well. So as we can see, Orc is starting to lose quite a lot of units, and really on this side the battle's been won. Already there's nothing really they can do to stop it. And again, not targeting these two-hand swordsmen, as you can see that always could have been improved. Because they do get the building bonus. And looks like this one here is about to go down. Yep, yeah, that's one down and a ram on this one over here, so that's going to be soon as well. So it's starting to look like a good game. Dugo over here is pushing off as much as he can, but naturally he is losing quite a few quite a few units. Trying to take this castle down, but I don't believe it's gonna be possible. Trying to save this town center, however, it does look really bad, but he has managed to keep it in there. And a second castle coming up there. So doing quite a bit of damage. As you can see, all that's really left are these town center and this strip of farms down here, using this gold mine here still. But apart from that, not much really left to do. As you can see, this coming down really slowly. However, this castle here is just going to be able to pick them all off. So there's not really that much going on. However, over here, there's still quite a bit of fighting going on. So they haven't lost hope yet. It is not a good game. It's getting close. So as we can see, I'm pretty much done spectating Chris right now. He's pretty much done everything he can in this game. There's not going to be much he really can do. So we'll move over here and we'll just watch the fighting for the rest of the game. As you can see, running in over here, doing lots of damage there, naturally with these champions getting their bonus first buildings. Over this side over here, you can see these guys are pushing in. These elite Mamluks, of course, taking quite a bit of damage from his hand cannons. Naturally, being the Turks, they do fire 20% faster. I believe that's them. What do they have longer range? It might be Spanish that fire 20% faster. I think it might be. Yes, there you can see my knowledge is gone on me. But over this side here, doing quite a bit of damage. Naturally, not going to want to engage this infantry here because, well, he's got cavalry and he's got pikes. It's, it's natural to run away. This side here, pushing in here. So, and as we can see, Chris is building back up. Very slowly, but very surely, he is building back up. And naturally, as soon as these castles here are down, that's going to happen as well. Over here now, running in, naturally, Goss vs. Lo Longbowman. Infantry loss, Huskal wins. Huskal is, of course, being one of the greatest infantry units of all time, I will say it. One of my favourite units, easily. So as you can see, he's starting to reclaim this area here, and there we go, Thorm has given a good game. Even after all this, pushing into this base, doing lots of damage over here, he has realised that he's not going to be able to push this side, and this side here is not holding. And they've given up, even though Chris was completely destroyed in that game, or I should say Oracus, and they were down a player, even though Ad Adidas did take a lot at the start, I will give him that, I probably should have shown you that, but he did take a lot of damage. But... They managed to keep playing, and they won. If Oracus resigned, the rest of the team probably would have resigned, and he wouldn't be able to take all this heat off him like he was. They were still attacking down here, losing two castles up as well. So, thanks for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe, and make sure you leave in comments what you want to see done in tutorials. I know I've covered most of it, but if there's anything in particular you want to see, like a full setup of a map or something like that, my style, let me know. Again, though, things with, like, rushing and economy at the same time, I really can't show you what to do there because well I'm not at that level that they are I can show you what I do but I'm only what like nearly 17k player so 17k 1.7k so and only being at that I might not be doing it right so I could be instructing you in the wrong way alright remember to comment rate and subscribe goodbye